This is a season of life. The plants are growing, the fish are breeding, and there is more and more being added to the farm. Welcome to another episode of The Pursuit of Coconuts. We are building an aquaponic system to fight corruption, food insecurity, and to empower local farmers here in the Philippines. I am actually new to aquaponics. A friend of mine named Aaron from Renewable Farms in California gave me the instructions, me process the build, and step by step through communication really walked with me in this. And so with the first pond and planters built and cycled, we are now planting plants and seeing the fruit of that labor and people here are amazed. They think it is witchcraft. Families and locals are trying to figure out how plants are growing out of rocks. And so it is training season. I am teaching a lot of the locals and the farmers here on how this system actually operates. And at the same time, I'm able to bring my family along with the ride. It's getting a bit busier at the farm, so we've got help. The kids are coming in and they're monitoring, measuring, and taking notes of all the plants while we're working on the second set. Teamwork makes the dream work. One set of pond and planters for me is one pond feeds five planters. Two months away from fully cycling the other two ponds. First one is fully set. We're gonna be adding thousands of fish pretty soon. And with the first one cycling, and it looks like it's growing well, we're gonna move on to the second, and this is where it gets a little tricky. Right now, we're gonna get ready to add rocks and cycle the second set. So we're in the market to go buy some more pea gravel, but now we're gonna have to order the lighter color ones just because we realize that the dark gray of the rock worked great, but the top gets really hot. So it's been raining season, so we haven't had a big problem with things, but um, as the hot season is gonna come around the corner, uh, we just wanna be prepared. So we're gonna get some lighter color rocks, mix it to this, but we're gonna be cycling the second pond. We've already got some baby fish kind of going in there. We're gonna be able to add some rock from our old system or the first cycled system, old is brand new, first cycle system into there to help speed up the bacteria process. So that. It is great to hear and see that because I was gonna be a little worried if there was gonna be burping and bubbles coming up. It's flowing well, it's got a little vortex in it. Sometimes if the plumbing isn't done properly, it can burp or have some hiccups and kind of blockage. So it's looking good now. So we are eight months into it and the team have done a tremendous job to get us where we're at. Looking forward to making this place beautified. Just kind of adding the grass, the decor, the gates um, and getting this all cleaned up. So we repeat the process. We start to clean the rocks, filling the bottom up with the large rocks and the smaller rocks on top. For the second pond, we used carabao and chicken dung, a little mixture of both to see how this would cycle. I wanted to see, honestly, what color the water would turn. The first one turned brown, and the second one is doing the same. Fine tuning the flow of the water, the height level of the water, making sure that everything's operating smoothly. And also we're adding plants, some from seed, some from the nursery. The LGU, the local government unit, has a nursery that has a program that gives out plants to locals who would like to farm. So we were able to secure some of them, trays of them, and we've got everything from cucumbers to long beans and everything in between, okra, eggplants. And so we are learning in the midst of this trial and error. This is gonna be a bit of a process. We're trying to figure out how much plants I need in the system to absorb all the nitrites and nitrates. And I'm trying to figure out also how many fish I should have in the pond and what that's gonna create. Now the volume of the water and the planters uh, were calculated so that the flow and the amount would be suitable. And we just have to keep monitoring it because this is a different environment, a different place. We use different materials and that all affects everything. So it is a learning process, monitoring process, and nobody really, really, really has the blueprints for something like this that's out in the open. But it is easy to learn. It just takes a lot of attention and care. And that makes sense because this is a living system. This is multitasking at its best. As the kids learn, I'm also able to train and teach the farmers, teaching in simplistic ways so that they can understand and it is paying off dividends. 
All right, so on this aquaponic adventure, uh, I know I'm gonna get a lot of good comments on this and I'm gonna do my own research, but look, we're starting to get little aphids right here, these little green things and these little things right there, they're starting to eat away at the plants. And so we are going to figure out how to treat these guys naturally. I've got so much more to learn. We're trying out new pesticides and insecticides using natural fermentation of potato leaves, garlic, chilies. And in this system, we can't use any chemicals. We do not want to disrupt anything in here. So everything is gonna be organic. And here's a fun fact. I did not know that aquaponics is not organic farming. To be called organic, it requires soil and we are not having to use soil. We have a rock medium. So this is not considered organic, but is very quote unquote organic in my opinion. We've been told by the farmer, Rowell, that so far it's effective and everything's looking healthy and it's good for the system. We can trim away some of the dead leaves that got affected. We're starting to get little flowers and little baby okras might be growing soon. So again, a great way to get rid of bugs, infestations and things like that is definitely tomato leaves fermented, diluted and sprayed just like any other spray and it's healthy for the aquaponic system. So success! Birds, animals, bugs, they all come and check out this new thing that's in the middle of the jungle that wasn't here before and it stresses the plants out and they have to adjust themselves and I heard after a time everything gets settled, we'll learn what to do and we'll treat things the way that we need to tr get treated and then it becomes a lot smoother. But for now, I'm going to enjoy the fruits of the labor right now. Everything is green, everything is growing, everything is thriving and I will just take it day by day. And with that being said, we're thankful for the partnerships that we're able to make. So the local government unit has a nursery that we're able to grab stuff from. So we're not having to seed everything, but we're also having to make sure that we're growing things on our own. Now this little pet chai is ready to harvest. So we turn on the water so the rocks are easy to work with. Pretty much go underneath it and check that out. And the beauty about this, instead of cutting that, we literally can wrap this around and package it like that or take it home. And now that'll last even longer with the roots. So that is our first pad chai harvest, all organic, ready to go. Let me show you again. So if you come close here, if you turn on the water, the water is hovering right above. You just get right below where the roots are at, shake off the rocks. And that is harvesting on the or aquaponic system. Wrap that up. And now you've got green leaves ready for eating. You want to see this, Penelope? So easy, a child can do it. Shout outs and spotlight to Rowell. So this is my local resident farmer. He actually used to work on a coconut farm, very familiar with plants and animals. He helps with the care about, does rice farming. And I just want to give him a little highlight. He actually lives a few doors down and our commitment was to hire local. So I actually went door to door and luckily I ran into this guy. And months before we even started the project, he said that he was interested. There's not a lot of jobs in this barangay. So luckily a few months later, once we did start the project, he came on board. Really hard worker and just really honest. And not only that, but a trait that I really appreciate is the fact that he's open to learn and he is vocal to ask questions and repeat things, which is really hard to find over here. It seems like the culture in the province over here are that people are usually micromanaged and I am not one to micromanage. So having found somebody like Rowell is a godsend. Everything's looking really good. Very, very natural. And then we're gonna start messing around with different other seeds and other plants to see how the system takes it. So stay tuned for that. Let me know what you wanna see, what grows in the Philippines in our aquaponic system, and we'll see how the system handles it. This was a season of learning, watching growth, reacting, and trying new things out for all of us. As I learned, I taught it, and I just try to stay one step ahead. This has been a fruitful season and we're gonna soak it all in because it's not gonna be like that for long. So we're gonna run into hiccups and we're gonna share that on the next episode. 
On this journey, you're not only supporting us, but you're supporting the farmers of Lobok and in the Philippines. Farming is an important industry and there's a decline in people farming. And so new technology, new infrastructure like this is a blessing and, a, and it's because of you guys that we're able to do this. So please hit that like, subscribe and support us because you're supporting so many more people behind us. So thank you guys again, see you to coconuts. And give us a comment if you wanna see anything else specific on the farms. Thank you for following us on this pursuit and we'll see you on the next one.